everyone! Welcome to another episode of our Design Thinking for Education series. This episode is on heuristic evaluation. I'm Debbie Pixton. What is heuristic evaluation? Heuristic evaluation is a strategy to assess a product, process, or experience based on the rules of thumb for good design. The rules of thumb involve readily available information that is not specific to the problem at hand, but can be applied broadly to a wide variety of situations. The heuristic evaluation serves as a checklist or scorecard for high quality design. I've mentioned the heuristics for good design and you may not be familiar with them. Jacob Nielsen researched these 10 heuristics for good design back in 1994. Designers have been using them ever since. These rules of thumb are visibility of system status, match between system and the real world, user control and freedom, consistency and standards, error prevention, recognition rather than recall, flexibility and efficiency of use, aesthetic and minimalist design, help users recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors, help and documentation. We'll get into some of these in just a little bit. For now, let's look at some example questions that are based on heuristics used in daily life to help clarify what heuristics are before we go further into this method. Do I have my cell phone, keys, wallet, and umbrella before I leave the house? Asking this question helps me prevent errors like locking myself out of the house, arriving at a store without a way to pay for goods, or without a means of communication if a problem arises. Is this the most easily accessible way I can express this idea? This question makes me consider if what I am saying can be easily understood by my audience or user. If it's easy, then users make the most efficient use of their time, whether they're small children or adults. Is what I'm describing now consistent with what was described previously? By asking this question, I ensure that I don't confuse people by using different language, images, or other cues to use a product or move through a process. Even in things like filling out a form, if I ask for a full name in one place and a name in another place, users may be confused about the different information being requested and not provide what's needed. In considering the design cycle, heuristic evaluation is in the test phase. Why conduct a heuristic evaluation? Heuristic evaluations allow you to identify issues quickly and highlight areas of improvement. Heuristic evaluations can be used when you don't have access to end users for testing but you do have access to a group of professionals, or even yourself, to provide feedback or a gut check on your design. Let's look at the process for conducting a heuristic evaluation. To begin, identify what you want to review. Then, depending on your scenario, you will either bring together a team of at least five evaluators with differing perspectives, or use yourself as a solo evaluator. In either case, take time in step three to familiarize the evaluators with the heuristics. Once everyone is familiar with the heuristics, determine a small number of tasks related to what you want reviewed that you would like the evaluators to test against the heuristics. Finally, instruct each evaluator to complete each task with the heuristics in mind. If working generally, evaluators should take notes on a sticky note with a pen to allow them to write some additional details on each sticky note. If another tool is being used, such as a checklist or a scorecard, evaluators should have those at hand as well. If taking general notes, evaluators should be sure to identify a heuristic for each issue found, and they should be sure to note all of the issues that they discover. Here are some examples of heuristic evaluations for use in education. Please note that these are not comprehensive, but should give you a good idea of what heuristics can look like for educators. Here is an example of an educator planning checklist. Note here that the heuristics are a point of reference for the person using this tool. It's not meant for documenting evidence that each of these things is done. However, if using this tool with a group, you may want to discuss what evidence of these things might look like during step three when you familiarize the evaluators with the heuristics. As an alternative, here's a scorecard example applied to evaluating a learning management system. While not a complete list, you can see how the heuristic is identified, and there's a space for evaluators to detail any issues that they find. Heuristic evaluation can be done in person or virtually depending on your needs and what you are reviewing. If you are in person, you will need the physical equipment that you need for the evaluation, space and time for the tasks that need to be completed uninterrupted, sticky notes and pens or other reference tools for each evaluator, and a list of the heuristics for each evaluator to reference. If you are conducting your evaluation virtually, consider using a virtual whiteboard for people to contribute their feedback on, 
such as Jamboard or Padlet. You can also make a table scorecard in Google Docs for evaluators to use and type their responses into. Whichever virtual tool you use, make sure your evaluators have capacity to take notes in it and complete the tasks under review at the same time. Here are a few tips and tricks. As you prepare for your heuristic evaluation, consider these factors when identifying your evaluators if you're using a group. What expertise does this person have that will help refine my product or process to the benefit of my user or learner? Do my evaluators represent different types of experiences and expertise? Because you will have multiple sticky notes or sheets with comments when having a group of evaluators, ask them to include their initials or assign them different colors to provide their feedback so you can follow up with questions as you incorporate changes into your design. Make sure to ask for details about the issues that are identified and which rule of thumb is being disrupted by the issue. And discourage your evaluators from identifying solutions at this stage. When all of the feedback is collected, it may be that issues combine in a way that needs a different solution than an issue that stands alone. Additionally, make sure that you choose the tools you will have your evaluators use based on your goals for the review and how you plan to act on the feedback generated. If you have a physical object or a particular space for your review, ensure that your evaluators are available for an in-person review. After you have feedback from the evaluators, schedule a debrief with the designers to share the input and determine your next steps. To review, for a heuristic evaluation, you'll use broad rules of thumb to assess the design of a product or process. You have the opportunity to leverage people with expertise, but they are unlikely to be your end users. Because of that, the evaluators may identify some more nuanced issues that users may readily see, but they may miss some major user errors. And because you're gaining feedback from people outside your team, you'll need to debrief with the designers, whatever job title they have, to determine your next steps. Thanks for watching.